So then now with so many of you guys in the house, and I guess all you guys, because they say seven brothers, seven different minds. All of you guys in the house now doing all this, when did you guys decide that you guys were getting into music? Was it something you guys were put into because of your father, something you guys decided, or was a combination of both? I would say a combination of both, but really we were around it, you know, watching my father and his band, the Black Eagles. And, you know, I remember the first time I heard my father's song on local radio station in yeah. Springfield, Massachusetts. Yeah. And he didn't realize, you know, daddy's on the radio, you know. <laughs> he realized that the song, I'll do anything for you, you know, as a, as a Jamaican, you know, exploding on the, the disco charts and the R&B charts in the United States. That's a major deal. Yeah. You know, to follow that was now that we found love, what are we going to do? Third world. So my father was one of those artists that set the pierce, even though he was a reggae artist. Mm -hmm. But, you know, when he started that, did that song with Burt Reed, Rest in Peace, the song kind of took him to a whole other a monster that he was torn with people like Frank T. Beverly and Mears. And, you know, mm -hmm. so it wasn't really, I think we grew up around, you know, mm -hmm. and then eventually your father and your mother are your are your idols right those who, who you want to be like as my father was a gunman then probably would i want to be a gunman <laughs> right and if he was a lawyer i would probably want to be a lawyer a doctor yeah. we children learn what they live that what surrounds them 100%. so that's why as parents you know we really have to to, to set good example so it was that was the biggest influence we wanted to do what daddy was doing yeah. you know the way he would, he would sit on the couch and smoke his spliff and have his notepad and play in his cassette and write into the to the track and you know and i live to see we come end up doing the same thing crazy that is crazy right there so then 18 you guys so then when did did the whole family move from where did you guys move from the States to Jamaica? What part of the States were you in? And then you moved to Jamaica. We were in Springfield, Massachusetts. Massachusetts. I went from kid kindergarten to high school. Mm -hmm. And when it was a little bit of conflict at that time as a man, because I was a hell of a football player. I played American mm -hmm. football. Mm -hmm. And it was, I had to decide whether I wanted to take these football scholarships and entertain that or take my true God given gift which was music, you know, okay. which I was still on the path of growing with that. It wasn't like I was in high school and had major success. It was just yeah. all still a dream. Mm -hmm. So I had to make a decision as a man. And my dad really helped me and said, y you know, your gift is music, son. Mm -hmm. And then my football coach told me, say, yo, you can sing till you're 100. I'm going to say, you know what? Thank you for telling me the truth. <laughs> yeah. You know, yeah, yeah. and yeah, I kind of yeah. just, I kind of just took it from there and just say, you know, let me stick with this music thing. Mm -hmm. But that, it's, it's between Springfield, Massachusetts, where we got our education. Mm -hmm. And then you moved to Jamaica. And I think the move was in 1995. 1995. But we had moved to New York. As soon as I graduated high school, mm -hmm. um, I left the graduation where I sang, me and Peter sang, it's so hard mm -hmm. to say goodbye by boys to men at our graduation. Yeah. And then went straight to New York. I mean, literally. There no party, no friends, yeah. no hangout, no ice cream. God. We came home, we eat dinner. Mm -hmm. Made a squeeze in a one kiss for my girl. Yeah. <laughs> 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 yeah. But, um, yeah, and then, and then we went to New York City. And I stayed mm -hmm. there for, uh, what, it was uh, three years. Mm -hmm. Like, yeah, three years. Okay. In 1992, we went up the same year. We went to Reggae Sunsplash, performed on Reggae Sunsplash, got okay. signed to MCA Records, which is now Universal. Yeah. So it was a beautiful thing that the same. I graduated in June, and then by September, I was signed to MCA Records. Cool. So God is good. And then from then, brother, it was like um, we started making music, stayed with MCA for two, it was a busy two years. Okay. And then we went to Africa in 94. And then my dad was just like, you know, we went to, when we went to Ivory Coast, it was just something culturally that hit us that was just like, this feels like home. And the closest yeah. thing to that, that we have connection to in the Western Hemisphere is Jamaica. Yeah. And then in 1995, my father fainted in the bathroom, I'll never forget, in Brooklyn. And he was like, yo, Moan, go on. I want to go home. Translation for everyone that's listening <laughs> worldwide. Yeah. Uh, but in Jamaica, I would say, Moan, go on. <laughs> This podcast is brought to you by www.twolinedmusica.com.